Hey folks, it's Nate. Thanks for joining me at the art table again today. And I'm here with my last video of the year. I promised to take a year in review look at what I've been doing over the year. I'm going to post this on both of my channels, both my vlogging channel and my main channel. Um, vlogging channel first on New Year's Eve and my main channel on New Year's Day. I'm recording this on New Year's Eve, so you may hear the occasional firework go off. People have been celebrating pretty much all afternoon, and I figured I was never going to get a perfect chance to do this. So if you do hear that, I apologize, but I don't have a lot of control over it. I wanted to take a look back at the year and talk a little bit about what I've been doing writing-wise. And I understand this is not something I usually do on my main channel, so if you mostly watch my main channel, I apologize for this. I do talk a lot of the time about storytelling on this channel, and I don't really want to talk too much about my own stuff because I don't want to feel like I'm constantly using this channel to push and sell things, um, even though I do aspire to be a formally published author. Um, if you're really interested in what I'm working on, that's why I have the vlogging and writing channel uh, as my secondary channel. This is mostly an opportunity to talk about writing topics and you know review stories, that kind of thing. But I think that I do learn lessons over the course of the year, and I wanted to recap them. I couldn't decide whether that was most appropriate for the channel where I talk about my own work or the more general channel. I think it is applicable to both, which is why I'm going to publish this video to both channels. So over the course of the last year, I set myself three writing goals, and I wanted to talk about them, um, what I did to accomplish them, and how they came out in the end. And this is just something that, you know, a lot of writing is, you know, key principles that are very large scale, and you can talk about in the abstract techniques, um, story structure, you know, how to build a good character, those kind of things. There's always a lot of value in looking at those things, but a lot of writing is a treadmill of trying to figure out what is going on day by day, week by week, and month by month. That's why I have a channel for talking about the big topics and a, a channel for the treadmill. But, you know, every year I try and set myself a couple of large scale goals. And then over the course of the year, I work on them. And I think it's useful to look at what you did while setting the goals and what your new goals are going to be. So for the last year, I had three distinct goals. The first goal was to write a series on my own writing process. And if you follow me and my, uh, especially my blog, um, you've seen that series go up over the month of November and early December, because I finished uh, my major project for the year, which was A Candle in the Wind. And then I did that series kind of using that as a case study. I had never really sat down and consciously analyzed my own writing process before. And that's part of actually why I wanted to write this series, because it would make me sit down and do that. Um, and it was very interesting to do. I can't say I really came away from it with any new insights, but it was a, it was a very interesting exercise. And it stretched me in some ways I wasn't really aware of. I was definitely more conscious writing a candle in the wind of what I was doing at each stage than I ever really have been before. Um, and in particular, I know that in working on previous projects, I've kind of slid back and forth between various stages of the project kind of loosely. And, you know, as I was working on A Candle in the Wind, I was a little more disciplined with these stages of the process just because I was thinking about them more concretely. I think I was a little more productive that way. So I may try and be a little more disciplined with the way I work on projects. I tend to be a little bit scattershot and just work on whatever I have to hand and whatever I'm in the mood to do, whether it's, you know, outlining, um, editing, or, you know, the actual nitty gritty of putting a scene together and writing it. And I, I was not as much like that with A Candle in the Wind, which made it easier to write the story but I wasn't doing quite as much on the side, which is something we're going to talk about in a little bit here. The second thing I wanted to do is at the beginning of the year, I said that I wanted to um, win the monthly voting in an Iron Age media prompt contest for the month. And, you know, I, I worked on that for probably about three or four months. 
And then Richard, the guy who runs Iron Age Media, announced he was going to publish a magazine. I had had difficulty um, getting a lot of readers for the prompts I was writing, even though I did enjoy that as a creative exercise, and it really, you know, kind of stretched me and helped me grow. Ultimately, the, the goal I went in with was finding new readers, because I hadn't been getting a lot of new readers, and I was trying to branch out um, in different venues. More on that in a minute. And as things stood, writing these short stories weekly, um, or at least a couple a month, was a drain on my time, and I wasn't really getting a lot of new readers. So I decided to stop doing that, and I instead decided maybe I will submit short stories to Anvil Magazine, uh, the Iron Age Media magazine that Richard was putting out. I managed to get published in that. So I think that is, you know, ultimately you want a wide audience to find your work and enjoy it. And to a certain extent on the internet, that's very possible. But there's also just for most readers, a kind of subconscious, if not conscious, gatekeeping effect where they rely on certain people to bring the best things to their attention. And while the Iron Age media prompts were fun, um, there's not really a whole lot of spotlighting that goes on during them. After the fact, there is a little bit, uh, but during them, not so much. And so I figured going forward, trying to find points like that where you can get a little more um, broad dissemination may be the venues to go for. Um, so getting published in Anvil magazine, I consider a win in that column, even though it didn't come exactly in the form I was thinking about at the beginning of the year. I have my eye on a couple of other magazines that I intend to continue uh, trying to submit to, and hopefully that will help me grow um, my name recognition and get some stories out in print, of course, which is always exciting to see. My third goal for the year was to look into Royal Road, which is a publishing service that is run by Amazon. Um, it's a very interesting kind of web novel thing. And again, venues and gatekeepers are very important in finding stories, whether we like it or not. And Royal Road is a pretty good kind of a gatekeeper. It gives you a platform. Um, it gives you a place where people are already coming to look for stories. And it's pretty accessible. Uh, that said, and I may be wrong about this because, you know, I'm not the best at legalese. Uh, as I was skimming through their agreements, it looked like you have to publish original work there. You, I could not simulpub pub between uh, Royal Road and my own blog, for example. That's a little bit of a commitment that I don't really have. Well, this year I didn't really have the time for. May next year. Uh, part of this was because I was looking at those prompts from Iron Age Media, you know, a couple a month. That's a lot of words to write. Uh, it was tricky. This year, I may go back and take another look at Royal Road, um, just because, again, it is a, a good gatekeeper slash gateway place where you can sit down. A lot of people are already coming looking for stories. They're in the mood to be entertained by original stories they've never heard before. It's an opportunity, and I would like to find a way to make it work. I have an idea, and with a little more time over the course of the year, maybe I'll be able to really knock something out of the park there. Maybe not. Um, which brings me to the topic of goals for the upcoming year. The first one, as you may have already guessed from what I've said, is I want to take another look at Royal Road, and I want to make a serious attempt at writing something to put out there. Probably not week to week. I will probably, as I do for my blog, try and build something ahead of time to be published on Royal Road uh, as, as time goes on. That may work, that may not. I mean, we're just going to have to see. Um, it's something to that I am thinking about. Let's put it that way. And I have to dig a little bit deeper into uh, the format, as it were. Um, I remember reading through the agreements. I haven't actually read anything that's published to Royal Road, so that's something I want to do. 
get a sense for where the market's at. You know, do your due diligence. It's just part of, it's part of publishing anything, if you ask me. Um, get an idea of what the market is offering and then ask yourself, what can I offer the market? You know, uh, this is, it's the, it's part of the business side, I think, of telling a story. And it's not the sexiest thing to talk about when you talk about storytelling, but it's important. And it's something that I need to dig a little deeper into this coming year. So I'm going to start with Royal Road. Um, this year, this last year, 2023, I did tinker a little bit with Substack as a publishing venue. Not gotten a whole lot of engagement there. Um, and Substack does not demand original content, so I, I, simulpul I am simul publishing between my blog and there. Again, not a whole lot of outcome. And honestly, I, I've had a sw upswing of numbers on my actual blog, which is where I would kind of prefer to have them because I have a little more control there. Um, Substack is nice in a lot of ways, but it's, uh, it's not a perfect platform. So, um, yeah, goal number one for this year, take another look at Royal Road. Maybe put something together to be started maybe in the second half of the year. Goal number two is to put out the Have Spell Will Travel short story collection. Um, I'm going to collect all of the novellas and short stories I've written about Roy Harper. Um, from the beginning of his journey until the end of 2023. And I'm going to try and publish them through Amazon self-publishing. Um, this is an adventure, and I've made self-publishing a goal before to mixed results. Um, I think that particular publishing project I had uh, higher hopes for, and I had not polished it to the point where I thought I had. Um, so I'm still working on that in the background. We'll get to it, hopefully, at some point. Um, so that is my big publishing thing for this year. Of course, I'm going to keep working on getting uh, short stories published in places like Tresova, Anvil Magazine, maybe a few other places as time goes on. But for right now, the big one is I would like that collection out. So I have an actual book of my own that I can point people to when they see my name come up in some of these other venues. Um, my third writing goal, uh, and I always try and have a meta writing goal every year, um, as with the, the study in process in 2023. So my meta writing goal in 2024 is to seriously sit down and workshop promotional writing. And I have two different fronts on this. What do I mean by promotional writing? Ways that I get my own name out there, um, whether it's on social media, or, you know, through the promotional materials I put together or the stories I'm putting out. I did a little bit of this with a candle in the wind. Um, I drew kind of a, a splash page that uh, I wanted to include with every chapter of that that went out. I think it came out okay. Obviously, I'm not the greatest artist that ever lived. Um, I, I don't know as I even quite rate as mediocre, but it... It was free, you know, I did it myself and that made it easier to deal with. Um, it, it looked more unique than your average AI art, but uh, it lacked a lot of polish for sure. So I'm gonna keep working on that. You know, there's a lot of good tools out there. I think AI in the visual arts has some potential, uh, which I haven't fully explored. Um, so I may tinker a little bit with that. Uh, but putting together promotional materials, blurbs, um, and there's also some tools that will kind of let you program your social media feed so it updates on its own, even when you're like at work or things like that, that make it more likely for people to see um, the promo stuff you put out. Those are all things that I really want to dig into this year and get a little better at because ultimately um, in the internet age, Building an audience is your own responsibility. And it's something I plan to take seriously in the weeks and months to come. So those are the things that I'm doing writing-wise this year and my thoughts on the year that passed. Um, I intend to continue grinding away at these things. I learned a fair bit, I think, from everything that I set out to do last year. And my hope is that this year I will continue to learn. 
If you follow me on the vlogging channel, which is Horizon Talker, you will hear me talking about the things I am doing on those fronts week to week. Um, if you just stick with Arc Table Talk, which is my more general uh, storytelling channel, I will cover topics as I find something interesting, uh, something I think that is really different from what I have, uh, I have heard or I am seeing around the internet um, at any particular moment. But I don't tend to have regular updates there because, again, I don't want to be constantly pushing my own writing on people um, if they just want some general storytelling talk. So there is a place for um, the, the heavy, you know, uh, what I am writing content. Horizon Talker, if, that, if you're really interested in that kind of nitty gritty stuff, I recommend you go there. Um, otherwise, if you just want to hear me talking about general storytelling things or general things happening um, in self-publishing or indie comics, if you're interested in my reviews, that's primarily what this channel is going to be again this year. I have no plans to change it, and if I do come up with some this year, I'll be sure to let you know ahead of time. In the meantime, let me know what you think of all that down in the comments below. There's a like button and a subscribe button down there. You can use those as you see fit, and I'll talk to you later.